Hello, everyone, and welcome to my webinar where we're going to be talking about does cloud mean the end of the DBA and life after Oracle Autonomous Database. My name is Francisco Menos Alvarez. I'm an Oracle ACE director since the year 2009 and an Oracle ACE since the year 2008. And I have been working with Oracle Technologies for quite a while. And I have been a beta tester of Oracle databases since version seven. And also had the honor to be uh, one of the first uh, Oracle certified masters for version seven from Latin America. Um, I also, I will see uh, spoken person for Latin America and Asia Pacific. I'm president of the APEC AUC, Independent Australia Oracle User Group, Chilean Oracle User Group, and New Zealand Oracle User Group. Um, I also uh, won a few awards during my career, such as 2008 Top OTN Forum contrib Contributor all year round when I was the main contributor for databases during the year 2008. That took me and helped me to win the Oracle ACE Award in the year 2008. I also won an Oracle Excellence Award and an Oracle Magazine Editor Choice, Choice Award back in 2010. Architect of the, uh, the year 2012 to LLC. And also last year, my session, Tips and Best Practice for DBA, was one of the top three uh, webinars of the year. I have presented over 400 sessions and 47 countries around the world. My blog is oraclenz.com. My email, if you have any questions or want to contact me after the webinar, is fmunasalvarez at datintensity.com. And my Twitter handler is at munas. And I'm always tweeting, uh, tweeting regarding free webinars, events, and many things that are happening within the Oracle community around the world. Uh, I also publish a book, the first one for backup and recovery for 12C, called Oracle Database 12C Backup and Recovery Survival Guide. And I'm very proud to write this book with a good friend of, uh, of mine from India, Aman Sharma. And also, this is the only book I know. They have a sh full chapter dedicated to logging and unlogging. There was reviewed by a good friend, Tom Kite. I am that intensity director of innovation, and I invite you to visit and learn a little bit more about us on www.datintensity.com. I would like to take this opportunity to talk just a little bit more about that intensity. That intensity is a leader in cloud management services, is one of the best in class providers available in the market and is evolving very well since its foundation back in 2001 uh, to today by acquiring a, a few good companies across the years and is very well recognized uh, by its global capabilities footprint and its superior service. That intensity has many offices around the globe and we have our headquarters are located at Boston, Massachusetts and it allow us to provide the real follow the same capabilities to our clients. The current slide allow you to have a short overview of that intensity capabilities and, and your Oracle credentials. We have over 650 customers worldwide, over 800 professionals worldwide, and over 2,800 staff certifications. That's enough about myself and about that intensity. Let's start talking about what we are here today. Uh, the agenda for this webinar is, first, we're going to be talking about the evolution of, of IT, about the past, the present, the future. So what's next? And we will finish with a conclusion about all the topics uh, of the webinar. Let's start talking about the evolution of IT. I have seen a lot of changes on my 29 years working with IT and Oracle technologies. Noted that I started working as a member of the first team to introduce Oracle to Latin America when I was only 16 years old. Since then, technology have evolved really fast. 
let's take a look, closer look to the IT evolution of on time. How we started with human computers back in the 40s. Uh, in that period of time, humans were using as computers doing specific calculations for many business. One example of a company that uses human computers in the past was NASA. I invite you to take a watch the movie Hidden Figures that will give you a good example of how human computers were used in the past. Next on early 60s was the era of the mindframes of the big iron, as many people know. That's when basically machines start to slowly replace the human computers. At screen, you can observe the delivery of a five megabyte hard drive from IBM. Basically, the introduction of the mainframes changed the industry with never before seen capabilities. Next, at early 80s, the client server technology changed the way we work with computers, introducing the distributed technology to separate it in two worlds. We don't have the need anymore to work directly on a mainframe, and we can work on a decentralized environment from a terminal that basically opened the door to the modern computers we see today. Next, by 2010, was the start of the private cloud era of, as many people know, the virtualization era. That basically was the start of a racing when many companies started to implement virtualization technologies such as VMware, Hyper-V, Oracle VM, Zen, and many others. This opened the door to the introduction of public cloud around 2015. With the introduction of public cloud, many companies started just to try a little bit of the work, their workload and this new technology. That opened the door to what we call the hybrid cloud era. That's basically when companies are starting to mix workloads between their on-premises data centers and public cloud data centers. Next, in the future, we expect by 2020, most, if not all, of company workloads will be finally be running on public cloud. This completes our short overview with regards to the evolution of IT. Now, let's change the topic and talk about the path of the DBA profession. When I started working with Oracle Technologies, back when I was 16 years old, the DBA position did not even exist yet. I started working as a developer using tools such as, for example, SQL Forms, SQL Reports, Oracle Menu, Oracle Casey, as to mention some. At that time, we basically expected the database to look after itself. With time, we discovered that some one was required to look after the database. This was basically the birth of the DBA profession. At the time, the main responsibilities of a DBA were to work with database defragmentation and execute the database backups that at the time were done with the database being offline. Basically, we are doing that job during the night. With time, complex complexity were introduced by adding new technologies to be managed by the DBA. As for example, DBAs is starting instead to look just for one or two very small databases that is start to work with multiple databases. We start to look after many different servers that not always were database servers, such as, as application servers, network, I need to learn a little bit about security, uh, DBAs, we start to introduce with new backup technologies, such as the introduction of RMAN. Then data warehouse technologies were introduced. RAC, real application cluster, it was introduced and added a new level of complexity to DBAs. DBAs were now starting to work with high availability and disaster recovery that introduced the standby databases. 
and making also this a little bit worse, DBAs were starting to mentor other DBAs and even developers and it started to absorb some of the system admin responsibilities. Also, many companies start to acquire different applications that in the background were using different database technologies, as for example, MySQL, SQL Server, DB2, and in the end, the database uh, administrator were were forced to start looking after the, uh, that environment. As you can see, in the past of the database administration profession, a lot of changes happened in the past years. And the DBA profession was always evolving. Now let's talk a, a little bit about the present of the DBAs. When talking about the present of the DBA profession, of course, the main topic that every DBA wants to talk about is cloud. Cloud computing is a hot topic to every DBA. I decided to create this presentation after my session called Tips in Best Practice for DBAs that I gave last year at Collaborate, where many, I went many DBAs approached me after my session to talk about cloud adoption and how it will affect the DBA profession. To my surprise, I was told that they were so afraid of losing their jobs due to cloud adoption that they became the main blockers of cloud adoption at their own organizations. Especially when talking about cloud offerings such as Amazon RDS, Oracle Database as a Service, Exadata as a Services, of even worse when we talk about autonomous database technologies. So, should DBAs be afraid of cloud adoption? If we take a closer look to the Bureau of Labor Statistics from the United States, for the job outlook for DBA administrators on the next 10 years up to 2026, we will see that the requirements for DBAs will grow 11%, that faster than the national average in the United States. The statistics from 2017 shows that the United States alone employed over 113,000 database professionals, making database administration one of the hottest careers on IT. As for example, if we start looking in other geographic regions for database administration demand, and we take a look in Australia, by searching database administration job openings at Jora, we'll be surprised to find over 5,000 job opportunities. And most of them are being listed for less than 30 days. This clearly shows that the demand for database professionals around the globe is growing and is not slowing down. Basically, more skills across multiple database technologies you have, more chances you will have to achieve a higher salary when compared with other, uh, when compared with other IT jobs in the market, such as, for example, uh, information technology managers, developers, senior developers, senior engineers, software developers, and so on. So DPAs are starting to learn that they should not be afraid of embracing cloud computer and instead they are starting <coughs> to learn more and more about what each cloud provider has to offer with regard to databases in the cloud. So it leaves us with the next question. What's the future of the DBA career? To properly embrace the future of the, the DBA profession, DBAs need to basically learn to evolve 
and understand that DBA do not mean anymore for a long time database administrators. They need to understand that DBA stands for database architect and they need to start getting focus on data. Let's take a closer look for another example in the industry when human computers were replaced by computers itself, by machines. On the example, let's take a closer look on the example given by the movie Hidden Figures that we early mentioned in the webinar. In that period of time, all human computers were afraid to lose their jobs by the adoption of machines, in that case, the IBM mindframes. When IBM itself started to deploy the machines with NASA, they discovered that the machine was not that efficient as they were predicting and was not fulfilling the requirement as they expected. <coughs> the human computers saw an opportunity and is starting to learn new skills in that time, Pasco, to learn to how to program the, the computers to solve the requirements of NASA on that period of time. Why that was possible? Because the human computers had a huge advantage with regard with the new technology that was coming and starting to be implemented. There was knowledge of how the business work. By learning new skills, they were able to evolve. And as a consequence, they did not lose their jobs. And they basically starting to become the humans that were operating the new technology that were being implemented. That's something very similar with what is required by DBAs. DBAs need to start to learn new technologies and start to make usage of all the knowledge of the business they have after working with the databases for many years. Some good example of new technology of skills that DBAs should be looking at the moment are automation in order uh, DevOps, uh, cloud computing, the containers, big data, also need to start learning as architects about storage, networking, and so on. Finally, it's time to talk about the future and what you should be doing next. Let's start talking about automation versus autonomous. For the past 10 years of my career, I have been recommending DBAs to automating most, if not all, of business as usual, what I call BIU work. This is basically all the repetitive work that you repeat over and over on a daily basis. And to concentrate at becoming as much proactive as possible by automating all business as usual possibles you can and what you can't, try to delegate it. Why? Because you have more important things to do with your time. I recommend this over and over because I'm constantly seeing DBAs losing too much time with BIU work, consequently making them unable to spend time on important things that they should be concentrating on, such as, for example, career development, training and learning about new technologies, working or important projects for the business, such as optimization, security, performance tuning, high availability, migration and upgrades are also many times placed on standby because DBAs are, do not have time to work on that and they are losing too much time being a BAU, doing BAU work or being a firefighter. And they need to concentrate and be able to work and try new technologies that could be could seriously benefit the business and allow the, the companies to obtain the best return of investment of their resources. Also, when we talk about automation and autonomous, we need to understand that Oracle 18C is not an autonomous database. Oracle 18C 
is a database technology that has embedded many aut uh, automations um, functionalities, but it's not autonomous. When we talk about autonomous databases, we're talking about autonomous data warehouse cloud or autonomous transactional cloud, but they are only available in Oracle Cloud. They are not available and not and will never be available on premises. To make it easy to understand uh, what's the difference between automation versus autonomous, uh, I would like to use uh, one example for the from the automotive industry to make it clear, clear the difference differences between them. As for example, I love to drive my car. I love to be behind the wheel and enjoy the experience of driving. Recently, I bought a new car that includes many driver assistant technologies, what they are automation functionalities. It has autonomous cruise control that automatically adjusts the vehicle speed to maintain a safe distance from the vehicles ahead of me, and even stop the car if necessary. Uh, they have line changing alert that allow me to control and don't lose control and change the lines if I don't want it, even a, a have a collision alert that will alert me if I'm close to have a collision due to the proximity to other vehicles and it break it for me if it's required. Um, they analyze the driver behavior and alert me in case of fatigue or dangerous driving behaviors. Basically, my car tell me to stop and have a coffee. Um, automatic uh, headlights and windscreen wiper that start itself is required. And another thing that make it a lot easier is parking assistance that basically push a button and the car uh, park itself. Uh, many people will think that this kind of automation features that were embedded in the car will affect my driving experiences. But remember, as the person at control, the driver, you can choose what options will be used and when. And also, I can adjust as per your driving requirements. So it does not affect me at all by the opposite side. They make my driving easier and safer, furthermore, allowing me to enjoy it even more. This is one, this is one good example about automation nowadays. Also, when we talk about autonomous, a good example is, is talk about autonomous cars. That are the kind of cars that without any human interaction, they will drive themselves. Basically, you just need to get in the car, tell the car where you wanna go, and that's it. For many years, many companies are investing in resources on this type of technologies. We're talking about Toyota, Tesla, Google, Uber, and so on, just to talk about fuel. And they are constantly making public testing of it. We know that the future of the uh, automotive industry are the autonomous car. But we know that they are getting close, but they are not there yet. We also know the when the autonomous car technology is mature enough, the adoption of this technology will not be completely from one day to the other. It will be gradual and will take some time to the people be used to it, trust, and start uh, uh, um, adopting this technology more and more. The same will happen with autonomous databases. The, the autonomous databases are here. The people will start slowly to adopt, but take in consideration that the full adoption of autonomous database will take a while, and also uh, they will be only available in the cloud. That means that companies that are still working on premises will not be affected with this kind of technology. DBAs need to understand that automation is the DBA best friend. Why? because DBAs have more important things to do with their time, as we discussed before. To recap and make it easy to understand the difference between automation versus autonomous, automation means minimizing human interaction, in other words, minimizing manual steps and is using more scripting. 
by the other side, autonomous means full automation with no human interaction required at all. After talking about automation and autonomous, the next, impo the next important topic that's left to talk about it is cloud computing. That's the inevitable next step in the DBA DNA evolution. We note without any doubt that our futures involve automation in cloud technologies. So why fight it? Why continue losing our time and energy against it? Let's take advantage of cloud computing now. So what's next? Working at developing key attributes for the, your career success, such as working on your attitude, on learn how to research, on never being afraid to innovate, and improving your communication skills. Some examples of attitude is learn to be proactive as possible and uh, make usage of automation because you have more important things to do with your time. When talking about research, uh, you need to learn to discover new technologies that will benefit your business and will improve the return of investment and in the business. When talking about innovation, uh, simple things can help you to innovate in the company. A simple example is one we talk about backup and recovery. Many uh, DBAs want to ask it, uh, them around the world uh, how long it takes to fully restore and recover their main production database in case of incident, they cannot give me a proper answer. They tell me that can take anything between three hours and three days. They don't know. They never did that before. If I ask them uh, uh, if they know, they can assure that their tape, backups on tape are recoverable, they also have no idea about them. That when I talk, I ask about if they have the backup and recovery process documented, that that way anyone in the company can execute it in case of issue. They also, eight of 10 DBAs do not have that process documented. If just imagine this situation that if it, tomorrow your database goes down and you need to fully restore and recover, you know that your boss will be in your side asking how long it will take straight away because the business is down, the business is losing money. And if you tell them, uh, him or her, that it will take three hours, they will, your boss will report that on top of the line and the CFO and the CEO will be expecting the database to be up and running in three hours. But because you, have, you never did that, we started have no idea. Then after three hours, your box, boss come back and ask you, are we there yet? You said, no, I have a few issues, give me another three hours. Your boss report that back to the CFO, back to the CEO, and you keep working. Three hours later, your boss approach, approach you again, and you said, no, I have another issues, give me another three hours. Can you imagine what uh, uh, the executives of the company will think about you that every time you ask for more, more and more time, they'll think this guy has no idea what he is, uh, he, he is doing. A simple solution to that uh, is try to innovate by taking a, a virtual machine and you start restoring and recovering your database on it. And of course, documenting the full process. This basically allow you to fully review your backup and recover, uh, your recovery process. We'll test our tapes if the information on it is recoverable in, in the process. And also allow you to fully document how long, the, all the steps and how long this process will take. That basically next time, if you have that issue and, and that incident and your boss come to you and ask, Hi, Francisco. How long it will take us to be uh, back online? Can they give me five hours and a half? Uh, because I know that the process takes four hours, but I'm taking one hour and a half just in case of any issues. That sounds a lot more professional, and they, you show the company that you are in control and you know exactly what you're doing. If it's possible, try to involve other DBAs to, f to do this process as a rotation. That way they can review the process and as two, three, four, five heads thinks better than one, each one can put their input and improve the process what's good. Another benefit of this 
<laughs> is that tomorrow when an incident like this happened and you are on your holidays, you anyone in the company can uh, follow the process because they don't will not require to call you during your holidays to do this. So the combination of these four simple attributes such as having a proper attitude, uh, learn to do proper researches, never be afraid of innovate and know how to communicate with your peers, uh, peers and this, your boss that will help you to achieve success on your professional and in your career. As a complement to my previous examples, uh, many DBAs spend most of their time being firefighters only by fixing problems and working on users' requests all the time. They don't do any proactive work. This mentality only will cause an overload of work to themselves, causing thousands of dollars on overtime, several hours without access to the data to the users, cause poor performance to the applications, and what's worse, of all, several unhappy users thinking that you don't have any idea of knowledge that's required to take care of their data. I can give you many examples like this, and that's why you need to learn to be proactive and never forget that. In addition, educating, prepare yourself to the future. You can uh, use your time learning about, uh, learn new database technologies such as MySQL, SQL Server, DB2, that include NoSQL technologies such as Cassandra, MongoDB. You can uh, execute your recovery test and uh, keep up to date with your firefighter skills if you want, and also practice the disaster and recovery plans by using Crash Simulator. It's a tool, uh, a script tool that I created and uh, is available free on my website, oraclenz.org or oraclenz.com that you can download and allow for free and allow you basically to practice more than 50 disaster recovery scenarios within your database. Uh, you need to ensure that you, the RPOs and RTO SLAs are being fulfilled uh, with your backup and recovery strategies. Remember that RPO means recovery point objective and RTO means recovery time objective. That in other words is how long your database can, your company can afford to be without access to the data and how much data can be lost in case of an incident. You need to gain deep knowledge with regards to performance tuning. You need to learn how the application works and how they interact with the database itself. You need to keep up to date with all database trends and technologies. You need to learn how to perform storage and physical designs uh, about the diagnosis and troubleshooting to resolve any database related problems. Uh, is also another good way to learn is by mentoring and training new DBAs. This allow you to review and learn new, thing, uh, new things by a different perspective. Learn about uh, new development trends such as XML, Java, Python, PHP, HTML, and, La and also scripting with Linux and Unix and Windows. That's very important. Uh, once again, automate it will be a you work or delegate it in case of everything you cannot automate it. Uh, implement capacity planning, hardware planning, be more an architect and learn to deploy and maintain cloud, uh, cloud environments uh, is also important. Uh, use your time also in improving your SQL and PL SQL skills and start reviewing the SQL and PL SQL codes that are embedded in your environment and be in control of the change request and the promotion of code to your production environments and master cloud technologies uh, such as infrastructure as a services, database as a services, platform as a services, and SaaS as a few examples of how you can prepare yourself to the future. I also recommend you to take a look on technologies such as, for example, Ansible that allow you to easily automate manual tasks. Um, Vagrant that also help you to easily uh, automate the provision of virtual machines. Uh, GitLab 
that allow you to create script repositories and create basically code repositories easily. Uh, Confluence that allow you to easily manage your documentations and create wikis. And also CCStat, that is a DBA automation framework that allow you to automate uh, most of DBA tasks. As a conclusion, uh, introduction of new technologies such as cloud computing, automation, and autonomous databases do not mean at all the end of the DBA. DBAs need to learn to evolve and understand once again the DBA do not mean anymore database administrators. They mean database architects. They need to make usage of all, uh, make usage of all business knowledge that they have. Also, they need to never be afraid to innovate and be proactive as possible. Uh, once again, automation is the best friends of the DBA because you have more important things to do and, code, and start evolving and learning all new technologies that you should, if you're not started yet, you should start as soon as possible. Thanks, Francisco. You may now submit your questions via the chat screen to your right. Francisco will be answering questions live very shortly. Also, join us for a future Think Autonomous webcast or access earlier events in the series on demand. Visit oracle.com slash thinkadv. And finally, we invite you to try Oracle Autonomous Database out for yourself. Register for a free trial. Click on the link in the resources section and access a 30-day trial of Oracle Autonomous Cloud. As we mentioned, we do invite you to submit your questions via the Q&A chat screen to your right. But should we run out of time and Francisco can't get to your questions live or you have questions after the session, please feel free to email our speaker at this email address on your screen. And I'll now turn things back over to Francisco. Thank you so much, Denise. Um, I hope everyone appreciate the, the presentation. I'm just moving to Q&A to take a look in the questions. That if there's any, yes, we have a few questions. And let me just move, we have some ones already. All right, we have the first question that I have here is from Gary asking, how do, does Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud compare with Redshift? And basically, the main comparisons when we put AW uh, Autonomous Data Warehouse against Redshift is the two more important, basically, is performance and cost. Auto uh, Redshift is a lot more expensive than running on Autonomous Data Warehouse and a lot is lower, especially when you take that uh, that of course autonomous data warehouse works with oracle database technologies and redshift work with postgres and that is main main key difference that you want to see when you compare side by side um another quest, questions i have right here if it's possible to share the slides if you go uh from tomorrow to my blog, oraclenz.com or oraclenz.org or, or oraclenz.net and go to the tab called presentations, you will be able to have access to download this presentation from my blog. And this session, get the slides. If you have your data warehouse running on Exadata, uh, what's the, the advantage of using Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud? Okay, the main uh, advantage is if you take a look, Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud also runs on Exadata. But the main point is the, the first letter of the acronym is Autonomous. Uh, basically, Oracle will look after your database environment. And as I mentioned in my presentation, they will automate it basically how your business as usual as a DBA. 
that means it will allow you to concentrate in our important things that you should be concentrate with and you not be uh, looking anymore about patchings they will look about performance you don't need you're not even able to create indexes uh, Oracle will take care of that for you and basically almost everything that did uh, basically the DPA lose time uh, as business as usual Oracle will look after that to you of the backup and recovery patching and so let's take a look what other information slides again on other slides uh, how can I replay the session? That's something that I, I need to ask uh, for the Oracle team. Um, I'm not sure about that one. Sure, actually, uh, I'll just jump in on that one. Um, so to download the slides, there is an icon with a folder and an arrow at the bottom of your console. You can click on that and you can get a PDF of the slides today. Um, an on-demand version will be a uh, link to the on-demand event will be sent to all registrants within 24 hours. So just look for that in your email. Thank you so much, Denise. That makes everything a lot more easier. Um, do you know if it exists any course for the DBL of the future? Um, I mean, a course that talk about storage network, licensing cloud, and so on. Uh, I know about some companies that are starting to create uh, this kind of training, but and I'm sure that you will start to see more and more trainings of this type coming in the next uh, six to twelve months. I'm not, I'm not, I do not know for one for sure, but I know that I hear that many people is working on this kind of training. I would not be surprised to see them is starting to show up in the next few months. And I have, uh, hello, does Crash Simulator work with all versions and license? And Crash Simulator work where uh, I'm tested to work with 11.2, uh, 11 release 2 and up, and work with uh, a container and non-container databases and also we have uh, all types of license of Oracle, yes. What else we have? And sorry, I was unable to complete my question as there is a huge complexity to move the Oracle database in AWS. So we decided to move it in progress by the preferable like Oracle. Is there any way to move Oracle database in the cloud, which are IEX hosted in a simple way? Okay, when you work with IEX and you are going to move to the cloud, you're going to have basically a change of Indians. Uh, uh, and that's why you will need to use the uh, proper migration tool for that. And that's something that is very simple and easy to do. And you have, uh, I don't see the, a big complexity. I don't see a reason of the change of complexity by using AEX to move it, especially for post Postgres. You can, uh, um, you can easily move it to Oracle in the cloud from uh, uh, bigger Indians, such as AEX or a little Indian in the cloud. Uh, does Oracle Autonomous uh, Database include deploying new databases, such as user and schemas build? And when you deploy autonomous uh, Oracle, any autonomous database is the uh, transactional one of the data warehouse. What you get in basically is a PDB as a service in the cloud. And then uh, you can basically import your data and you're ready to go. You can uh, for sure uh, 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 do that with no problems at all. And our main question, another question is basically a, a main difference between ATP and autonomous data warehouse. Well, if you take a look at the, in the reality, they are 
uh, PDB as a services, they can be running even over the same uh, uh, container. The main difference, of course, is one is set up for to to be a data warehouse, and another one to work as a OLTP uh, database. That's the main changes. Uh, another change that you will see is the partition is disabled on data warehouse and is not disabled. Uh, it, it's enabled on the transactional, uh, the ATP. Another thing is in the data warehouse, you're not able to create indexes, but that is that option is disabled, but it is not disabled when you work on the ATP. But that's basically the same way when you create databases, you will create and set up in a different way once uh, data warehouse ones compared with OLTP ones. That's the same concept in the background, basically. Both are full autolo, fully autonomous and looked by Oracle. And let's see another questions. What scripting languages are the most utilized by Oracle DBAs? Well, the one that the I see DBAs working a lot at the moment and is the, the adoption being very huge and I would recommend you to take a look, Eric, is Python. And start taking a look in Python, and uh, I'm sure that you will not regret at all. Let's see another question. Okay, that's, that's repeating the same question. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, thank you for participating and being listening to my presentation. Since Oracle Agency is autonomous database, it will be there an activity the database will perform if they are using Oracle Cloud Agency. Okay, uh, just to clarify, Oracle Agency is not an autonomous database. Uh, the autonomous data warehouse cloud offering and the ATP, the autonomous uh, uh, transactional processing, they are autonomous uh, products running over Agency but ATC is not autonomous database. When uh, if you uh, start using ATC at the cloud or start using ATC on premises, you will continue to work as the same way you work as a DBA with previous versions. But if you start working with autonomous databases such uh, AWS, uh, autonomous data warehouse cloud and ATP, then uh, Oracle will take you the uh, basically hour of your business as usual, uh, and they will concentrate in doing your backups. They will concentrate in the performance of the environment, patching, and so on. And it will allow you to concentrate, as I mentioned in my last few slides, in the data itself and things like that, that will allow you to be. Uh, improve the return of investment to your company and help you uh, in our, with all your business needs. Uh, what are your thoughts about database technologies moving to the cloud? What's the future of Oracle in the cloud? Is it still the dominant database? Uh, I still think that Oracle will continue being at, at, uh, the dominate database thanks to our advancements and experiences that Oracle have compared with other competitors. And when we talk, of course, about cloud, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, cloud is here and there's no way we can get rid of it. That's the future. And we need to embrace and and try to learn uh, most as we can about technologies. I will not say uh, when I say that I will not be saying that we are everybody will be fully in the cloud in the next year or so. That will the adoption of cloud will still take a few years. I will, will say around two to two to four years from now. Most of the companies, if not all, will be already running out their workloads in the cloud. And I see the future that Oracle is still being strong. And, and of course, you have other co competitors in the market. And it depends on what do you need. You, uh, if you need an uh, environment that's fast and, and the cost of processing high volumes of data is is lower 
then Oracle will have that will be the prime uh, option that you should be looking at. Uh, will autonomous ATC database will have backup and recovery procedures while running on Oracle Cloud? Uh, again, ATC is not the autonomous. Uh, or ATC is a normal database that's any other, and you continue having backup and recovery procedures when running on Oracle Cloud. You can uh, deploy ATC and Oracle Cloud as a database as a service that, uh, contrary with RDS, Oracle gives you full access to the OS. You have access, uh, you can connect as root. You can continue using RMN as always. You can do your backups, even use a data pump. You can do all your backup and recovery operations as always. Nothing has changed with ATC itself. Uh, what is the current percentage of Oracle Cloud adoption across our industries in the US? Uh, Eric, that's something that I need to investigate that I can get back that to you later. And I can tell you about my experiences here on my region in the Asia Pacific and Australia, New Zealand. And if you ask me this question in this region around two, three years ago, the adoption of uh, Oracle Cloud in this region was very little com com comparing with the other competitors but that hasn't changed and in the past 24 months is the adoption of Oracle Clouds have grown substantially and I will say that Oracle Cloud in the Asia pack is now a big player. It's a big player in fighting head to head with AWS and Azure. The two automated features from Oracle 18, 18C require additional licensing and uh, yes, you have uh, features like in-memory database uh, that require uh, licensing. You have the uh, active uh, data guard like any other version that require licenses and, and things like that. When you go, go to the Oracle Cloud, you have uh, uh, basically the option to choose uh, if you deploy ATC itself, uh, Standard Edition or Enterprise Edition, and you also have the three options uh, that you can choose for uh, Enterprise Edition. Uh, basically, is the Enterprise Edition alone that do not include any options, and basically is just a standard by itself. We have the second option, the Enterprise Edition, that basically included everything except a rack, rack one node, uh, in memory database, and active data guard. And then you have basically the stream performance option of Enterprise Edition that include licenses for everything. That means you don't need to care about uh, nothing. And that's the advantage when you use the ATC in the Oracle Cloud. But if you use the on-premises, it's not changes at all. It's still the same as you have it before. Remember, the Oracle 18C is nothing else of version Oracle 12.2, basically. And which new database technologies is the closest to Oracle that might be the best, the best transition? Uh, it depends. When we talk about Oracle database and technologies, all depends on your user case and uh, what you try to achieve with your database technologies. You have many other products in the um, in the market, but all will depends on your goals. I'm still thinking that for the main requirements for transactional databases, if you want a database that's uh, 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 that looks after the integrity of your data, recoverability of your data, and availability of your data is nothing compared with our equity market. And Denise, how we are with time? I think so we are close to achieve the limit. Do I still have some time to keep going with some other uh, questions or, or we are out of time? Um, I would say maybe another question or so. And if Francisco does not get to your questions, you can either submit your email through chat and he can respond to you after, 
or feel free to email your questions to the email on your screen. Um, but yes, we are coming up to time. So maybe one more question. Thank you. Let's see the next one in the list is, uh, is Oracle Autonomous Database similar to AWS uh, uh, RDS of Azure? No, not at all. <coughs> and if we, we talk about uh, AWS RDS, uh, what RDS do is basically just provide you with uh, Oracle database in the cloud without no uh, access at all to the operation system and uh, restrict most of the functionalities uh, and, uh, f uh, from Oracle. And as per example, you cannot, uh, you can tweak a few things like the riddle of switches and the riddle of switches will happen at the minimum of 12 times per uh, per hour. That means or, uh, AWS will force a riddle of switch every five minutes uh, or faster than that. You cannot have a, a, a make the riddle of switches apart. You have no access to super users as a sys, one example of system, and you have a, a, a uh, admin account, and we have limited privilege and we can work from there. And it's hard to do proper tuning. You need to learn a few more uh, different skills to manage the Oracle environment on the RDS. And basically everything that AWS is doing for you is looking from some ways to recover your database environment, give you more high availability by using uh, their regions and and patching the OS environment in the background. When the autonomous database uh, from Oracle uh, do everything for you. You don't need to have access or uh, super user, you just need to load your data and that's it. And and Oracle take care about everything else. They will take care about your performance, they will do a, a achieve all your SLAs, they will patch the OS, they will patch the Oracle database. That's something that AWS will not do it. They will upgrade it to the new versions and they will take care about everything for you. And that is the main difference between the autonomous database with uh, AWS. AWS RDS of the options you have in Azure, they are not autonomous at all. I think so that uh, all for today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me offline. You can, you have my email on the screen. You can contact me at, at any given time. Apologize in advance if I had no time to reach your question, but thank you so much for your interest. Thank you so much for participating in the session today and hope to meet you uh, any time soon in the future. I will be speaking in the Oracle Open World uh, uh, that started in a few more days. Hope to see you over there too. Thank you so much.